myself. Yes, indeed. Come on. I feel a yes, indeed, in my spirit. Yes, and amen. Come on, turn to somebody and say, yes, and amen. Come on, that means so be it. Yes, and so be it. Glory. Glory to God. Well, we thank God for the opportunity to release the word of the Lord today. We give honor to the angels of this house. Bishop Barney, Prophetess Barney, God bless you all. I'm telling you that God is ready to do a work in here today. I'll tell you, this has been a week ever since I got the call from Prophetess Barney. Barney, excuse me. Now, ever since I got a call from Prophetess Barney, I promise you that things were happening left and right. One of them, my, my, my tire called a flat out of nowhere. <laughs> right over in this area. There's some other things in place. And I said, you know what? I, I've been in this thing for a little while. And I, I believe something is getting ready to take off on Sunday. I don't know what it is. Ah, yes, Lord. All right, grab your Bibles. Grab your Bibles. <laughs> I don't want to waste time. Grab your Bibles. Turn, <laughs> turn, to, <laughs> turn to 1 Samuel chapter 17. Okay, I'm ready to go. Come on. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to take off. Glory to God. 1 Samuel chapter 17. God bless everyone who's watching by live stream. We honor you in the name of the Lord. First uh, Samuel, verse 17, chapter 17, excuse me. And we're going to look at verse 3. We're going to kind of bounce around just a little bit. First Samuel. First Samuel, chapter 17. Just for us to get a kind of a gist of where we're going. Just follow along as I read. Simply says, so the Philistines and the Israelites faced each other on the opposite hills with the valley between them. They were in a fight. There was a battle that was going on. <clears throat> then Goliath, a, a Philistine champion from Gath, came out of the Philistine rank, ranks, ranks to face the forces of Israel. He was over nine feet tall. He wore a bronze helmet. His bronze coat, uh, he had, and his bronze coat of metal weighed 125 pounds. He also wore a bronze leg armor. He carried a bronze javelin on his shoulder. The shaft of his spear was as heavy and thick as a weaver's bend, a beam, tipped with an iron spearhead that weighed 15 pounds. His armor bearer walked ahead of him carrying a shield. Mm. Verse 8, uh, Goliath stood and shouted a taunt across to the Israelites. Why are you all coming out to fight? He called. I am the Philistine champion, but you are only the servant of Saul. <laughs> Pay attention to that. Choose one man to come down here and fight me. If he kills me, then we will be your slaves. But if I kill him, you will be our slaves. I defy the army of Israel today. Today, Send me a man who will fight me. When Saul and the Israelites heard this, they were terrified and deeply shaken. Isn't this interesting? Not only the soldiers were shaken, but the leader, the king, was shaken by the enemy. Okay, let's just fast forward here real quickly. Verse 45, David replied to the Philistine, You come to me with the sword, with sword, spear, and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of heaven's armies, the God of armies, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. Today, the Lord will conquer you, and I will kill you and cut off your head. And then I will give the dead bodies of your men to the birds and wild animals. And the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, just for a few moments, I want to go with this thought. I, 
I'm going for the head. I'm going for the head. Turn to somebody and tell them, I'm going for the head. This year, in 2022, my assignment is to go for the head. Tell somebody else, please, I'm going for the head. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the privilege and the opportunity to be able to serve your people in this manner. Lord, we thank you for the word now. Now, Lord, I ask you today, let your word come alive. Demonstrate your word today in just a powerful way. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in, my, in your sight, Lord. Amen. Oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. In order for you to really understand when you go into a battle or any kind of competition, it is wise for you to know a little bit about your enemy. It is unwise to step into a situation where you are uh, don't know all of the, the enemy's tactics or uh, their stats and uh, any sports books in here. Uh, one of the things that they do during the week, particularly since it's football season, they don't spend the time just practicing, but they spend time in the locker room looking at film. They take the time to look at and study their opponents. Because on the other side of the line there, there's someone there that may be a little bit more skilled than me. They may have a little, you know, more talent than me. But if I study certain moves, oh God, if I study certain moves, I will find their weakness. Come on, listen to me now. So, so that, that is very important now that we just don't run into a battle or run into a situation. You must allow the Holy Spirit to show you the weakness of your enemy. <laughs> and so let's say a minute, just go back and look at this dude named Goliath. <laughs> Goliath was known as the Philistines champion. I mean, and this dude, I mean, you know, we read it now. This 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 dude was just flashy. You know, he he he, he you know, you see there's the army and so forth, and you see his flashiness, right? When he he took it upon himself to step out among the ranks and say, Hey, this is who I am. Mm -hmm. So much so that he said, Look, I, I want you to know, and he identified himself, he said, I am the champion of this crew. <laughs> I want to let you know that uh, you're not fighting them, you're fighting me. So if there's anybody in your group, in your crew, come on, let me just bring it down here uh, to, to Davidson Theodore for a minute. If anybody's in your crew, in your hood, in your game, that can fight me, come on now. What we see here in the scripture is He's what we call in the streets, calling them out. Yeah. Yeah. And all for the past two years, glory to Philip, for the past two years, the enemy has been calling you out Amen. to see what are you going to do. Yeah. Oh, my. <laughs> Very interesting here. Now, we just said that you got to study your enemy, right, to find his weakness, right? He said here, now, uh, listen, I defy you because I see all you are is just the army of Saul. <laughs> oh, man, I'm getting ahead of myself. The enemy don't know or don't understand that you have backup. The enemy will look at it in the natural because the enemy, glory to God, we know that the enemy has some power. But it does not have the ability to see, glory to God, how powerful you really are. So what does he do? He calls you out and says, yeah, come on, come on. Let, I, I, listen, I'm, I'm focused so much on my strength and my flashiness that, listen, I, I'm not worried about you because, you know, I've been here before. Hmm. We've been here before. Yeah, I've been here before. So I'm not worried about you. I'm not, I know what I can do. So I know this game is a wrap. This battle is a wrap. Because I don't have to worry about your folks. Because I am their champion. Woo, what boldness. Uh -huh. This is the very thing. Come on, Jesus. This is the very thing that got Satan kicked out of heaven. Oh, God. There we go. There we go, bitch. 
salvation. I saw him fall as a rat, a rat, like me. Uh, I will, there it is, be. I will be like the Son of God. I am going to, listen, I'm going to be just like him. It is the same language. It is the same tone. It is the same bravado that Satan used that was in Goliath. This is who I am. See me. I want you to fear me. (laughs) You got to watch this year how the enemy has been using intimidation tactics. The Bible said that he had an armor bearer with his shield. I want you to know that I'm bad. I'm bad enough that I got somebody carrying my stuff. I'm not trying to put so much emphasis on your life, but you got to know what you're dealing with. Because some of you have been shaking in your boots for the past two years over a defeated folk you just didn't realize. Many of you, just like the Israelite soldiers, have been challenged or called out by your enemy. We see in the scriptures that the Philistine soldier, in his pride, saw the Israelites as Saul's men, thus speaking to them as if they were nothing, no match for his greatness. Your enemies have done the same thing to you, that they have thought you had no backing or power strong enough to defeat them. God says that you have gone through years of being underestimated. Underdogs. Yeah. However, I declare the prophetic decree of the Lord that 2020 is the year that the Lord himself will not only fight for you, but fight through you. We have to shift gears. Shift our mentality God do it for me. In 2022, God is not going to do it for you. He's going to do it through you. There is a bonus that God is requiring his people to step in. They that know their God shall do mighty exploits. But you've got to know that you belong to him. You've got to know that you're in fellowship with him. You got to know that you belong to him. So that when you stop in authority, when I speak, something happens. Not because Bishop told me so, not because Apostle told me so, not because Prophet told me so, but because it is so. Somebody shout, it is so. Glory to God, I feel you, Jesus. Hey, come on. Allow me to prophetically tell you. Where you are, where you're going in 2022. Number one, let's deal with this. God is using an ordinary instruction to lead you to your destiny. Let's look at verse 17, the same chapter of Samuel. Let's look at verse 17 to 19. The Bible says, One day, Jesse said to David, now we're talking about David, David, little young guy, ruddy David, all he was doing, thank you so much, all he was doing was taking care of the sheep, David, (laughs) while nobody was looking. Let me just pause here and tell you. That even though other folks didn't know what you were doing behind the scenes, God noticed it. And you just go back a chapter before, Samuel went to David to anoint him because God simply says, I'm tired of Saul. Because Saul got an obedience problem. Obedience problem. So I am done with him. I'm stripping stripping now in the kingship, but the kingdom out of his hands. And I've already appointed somewhere else. Amen. While you were working behind the scenes, you didn't realize that God had already appointed you. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Let me just say real quick, like I gave this word last night, you are someone's replacement. Amen. Settle that now. You are someone's 
to a place. And let's just move on. Okay, verse 17. One day, David, one day Jesse said to David, Take this bas basket of roasted grain and these ten loaves of bread and carry them quickly to your brothers. And give them ten cuts of cheese, uh, and give, give these ten cuts of cheese to their captain. See how your brothers are getting along. <clears throat> Bring back a report on how they're doing. David's brothers were with Saul and the Israelite army at the valley of Eli. Eli fighting against the Philistines. So his brothers were in the midst of the battle. <laughs> his father said, David, here, take them some food, and while you're there, go find out what they're doing. Amen. God, in this year, hear me prophetically, I need you all to hear me prophetically now about this year. God is giving you ordinary instructions, but it is, it is the key to lead you to your destination. Come on, it has already started. Amen. What I'm saying to you is, is that your time of just tending the sheep, doing things behind the scenes is over. God is giving you an instruction that's going to lead you to the front because it's time now for you to get in position so that you can take it over. Oh God, here we go. So that you can take it over. So don't think that when you get an instruction from the Lord, okay, Lord, I hear you. On your job, God says, okay, go apply for it now. Yes. My Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Give them your resume now. Thank you, Jesus. Well, God, I don't. God, I, I don't qualify for it. Listen to the instruction. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Go do it now. Thank you, Jesus. It is the simple instruction that God is using this year to take you to the place where he always wanted you to be. So that's what we see here. God, excuse me, David's uh, father, gave him a simple instruction. David's moving now. He takes off. He goes. He's on his way. He's going on the scene, all right, to get in position. The second thing I want to bring up here, prophetically, the ones closest to you won't understand why you are where you are. Look at verse 28, please. But when David's oldest brother, Elab, heard David talking to the men, he was angry. So now when David got on the scene now, he heard Goliath, you know, shooting his mouth off and all this. And and, and David was like, okay, uh, uh, what, what what's going on? Have you ever been somewhere and, and you see some folks, you know, they're talking crazy. And you, and you see the folks who actually got the authority to do something. Like, why, why, why are they just, why are they just sitting there doing nothing? Amen. You, you are more offended than they are. Amen. You, you ready to do something more? What, what, what are you sitting around here for? Amen. How y'all gonna let this dude say all this stuff about your God and my God? Amen. Right? Amen. So that's what happened. David was asking questions. What's this? What's, what's, what's happening? What's going on? And then the word came down from the king. Listen, if it, anybody, can take, anybody can take this dude out. Look, I, I, you, yeah, I, I'll free you from paying taxes, and I'll, I'll give you my daughter in marriage. So David's asking questions, and like, okay, is this true? Did the king say that? All this is going on, and everything. And, and listen, uh, the, don't don't be afraid to ask questions because sometimes even in the process. God is going to have you to ask some strategic questions. Okay. All right. All right. So, so his brother gets mad and gets angry. Why are you doing, excuse me, what are you doing around here anyway, he demanded. Yeah. What about those, watch this, few sheep you were supposed to be taken care of? I know about your pride and deceit. You just want to see the battle. Isn't it interesting that his own brother minimized what he was called to do? I'm trying to tell you, you can't start tripping over somebody minimizing what God has called you to do. Because it's only folks that do that, they don't understand anyway. Oh, here's a new flash, and you don't have to explain it to them. We spend so much time and waste so much time trying to explain about the moves of God in our life that we're wasting time. And listen, they don't really care anyway. It is jealousy and envy at work, which means one says, although we think jealousy and envy 
is the same. Actually, one says, I want what you have with a passion. And the other says, I don't think you deserve it. And usually when people are questioning you like that, why are you here? What are you doing? What makes you think you're going to change this neighborhood? What makes you think you're going to do a thing, build homes and houses on this street? What makes you think you're going to make some noise over here? Don't you know they've been shooting? Don't you know that every time they build something up, they tear something down? Don't you know what's going on here? But I, I got a word. I got a word from God that says it don't matter what you think. Jesus said, Jesus said, who do men say that I am? Some said, ha, you're a prophet. Some said, you're this and that. Now, here we go. Who do you say that I am? Thou art the Christ. Come on, Peter. The Son, another translation, of the God who is alive. Fear you got it, son. And upon this rock, this revelation, I will build my church. And the gates of hell, Hades, shall not prevail against it. He said, it never did matter what other people thought. It don't matter what they think. It don't matter about how their opinions pertain to where God had you. All that matters is yes. you know yes. and God knows. Yes. So David alluded to him and said, man, what are you talking about? Why are you, why are you tripping? Why are you so angry? Yes. What's, what's wrong with you? Yes. That's not me. Thank you. Isn't it interesting, Bishop, that the one that says you're in pride is actually the one that's in pride. Mm. Usually, let me say that again. Just listen. The one that usually says that you're in pride is actually the one that's in pride themselves. All right, all right. So people, they won't understand. Let's go, let's keep going. Number three, you shall prophesy your enemy's future face to face with kingdom boldness. Verse 45 and 46, it says, David replied to the Philistines, you come to me with a sword, with sword, spear, and javelin. But I come <laughs> to you in the name of the Lord of heaven's armies, Amen. the God of the armies of Israel, you. whom you have defied. You. Today the Lord, glory, you. will conquer you. Oh, come on, catch the prophecy. I will cut, I will kill you and cut your head off. And then I will give the dead bodies of your men to the birds and the wild animals. And the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. Did you catch that? Come on. Because God said in this year of 2022, you're going to go to your enemy face to face. And say, thus says the Lord, my God, this day God shall give you into my hands. Come on. There is a boldness and authority that you have that you can say that. That's right. That's right. This year, we're not going to kowtow. We're not going to run back. Okay, I'm going to let them talk. That year is over with. They have been given time to say whatever they wanted to say. Demonically influenced individuals. God has given them time to say whatever they want. God says, this time, the church that I'm raising up, the church that I'm raising up is not a passive church. The church that I'm raising up is a church that's bold, not afraid. You want to know how? Because they keep standing in the midst of COVID. They keep standing in the midst of everything that's happening. Everybody tell them to fall back. But it's something about this new breed that says, hey, there's an authority that's on me. And I got to speak to the power that's in front of me and say, this day you will fall. Thank you, Jesus. All I'm saying to you is, get ready. Because your mouth has been anointed for this moment. Let me say that again. Your mouth has been anointed. 
anointed for this moment. Who will go for us? Who shall we send? Isaiah, come on. Here am I, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Send me. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You're going to prophesy to your enemy face to face. Thank you, Jesus. Let's keep going. Number four, you will not put someone else's armor or assignment on to fulfill yours. Verse 38, 39. So David goes to Saul and says, Saul, don't worry. I got this. I'm going to take him down. I'm going to fight him. And and Saul said, wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on, David. I don't know about this. I don't think that you're ready. You too young. You're you're too young, love ministry. You can't handle that. See, that's what the religious is saying. Uh You too young. You're not experienced. You haven't. You don't. You don't have a level of ministry. You don't know what you're doing. This is what Saul was saying to David. David, you're not equipped for this battle. David told Saul. David told Saul. Okay, we'll get there in a minute. So, so David had explained to had explained to Saul. Listen, you don't know where I've been. Amen. God has been preparing me. Amen. Ah, God, God was preparing me while you were ignoring me. Amen. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. God was preparing me all along when you were acting like I wasn't even there, or I even I, was, I didn't even exist. And so the Bible says now, once, once, once Saul uh, conceded, said, okay, okay, David, you going to do this? Okay, all right, this is, go, go ahead. The Bible says in verse 38, David, uh, so then Saul gave David his armor, a bronze helmet, the coat of a uh, mail. David put it on, strapped the sword over it, and a step, uh, uh, and took a step or two to see what it would feel like. Hmm. For he had never worn, worn such a thing before. Uh-huh. I can't go in these. This is what David yeah, said. I can't go in this. This don't fit me. Yeah. David said, he protested Saul, I'm not used to them. Oh God. Yeah. I'm not used to this type of armor. Yeah. So David took them off again. This type of armor. My God. So right now, can you all do me a favor? Let's just stand real quickly, real quickly, real quickly. I want you just to shake off the armor that they put on you. I want you to shake off everything that folks said out of their uh, disbelief. Well, you're going to need this. Uh, you know, I want you to do it. If you're going to do this, then you need, to, you need to put this on. I want you to shake it off. Because God said it don't fit you anyway. <laughs> and oh, it was never yours in the first place. It was never yours to sign it. I never called you in it. I feel like I'm talking to some people that have some folks saying, well, you know what? We're just so disappointed in you. We, we thought you were going to go this way. No, no, that's called unhealthy expectation. And God says, shake it off. It's not your assignment. It's their assignment. I got to free you from that. I got to free you from that. Because we've been carrying around somebody else's assignment just to make them feel good. We didn't want to make them feel bad. We did it out of a courtesy. But God says, out of courtesy, shake it off. It's not your assignment. Uh, It's not called your assignment. Number five, we're almost done. You will use what you learn during 
your waiting season. <laughs> this is what I want to get to. Verse 32 to 37. This, this, is, this is what David told Saul. He said, don't worry about the Philistines. David told Saul, I will go fight him. David, Saul said, don't be ridiculous. Saul replied, there's no way you can fight this Philistine possibly win. You're only a boy. He's been a man of war since his youth. But David persisted. Watch this. I have been taking care of my father's sheep and goats. Mm -hmm. He said, when a lion or a bear comes to steal a lamb from the flock, yeah, I go after it with a club and rescue the lamb from his mouth. <laughs> if the animal turns on me, watch this, I catch it by the jaw and club it to death. I have done this to both the lion and the bears, and I'll do it to this pagan Philistine too, for he has defied the armies of the living God. The Lord who rescued me from the claws of the lion and the bear will rescue me from this Philistine. You don't know where I've been, Saul. Come on now, y'all. 
if you hit somebody with a brick, it's going to bounce off their head and hit the ground. You know there had to be another level of authority when he was swinging. That what David's strength there, baby. That was the strength of the Lord because that song took that joker out. One stone gave him the victory. Ah, God says this year, all it's going to take, here we go, is just one hit. <laughs> all it's going to take is just one song. Oh, all it's going to take is just one prayer. All it's going to take is one step. All it's going to take is one mustard seed of faith. All it's going to take is just one. Yeah, I got to say that because we used to keep praying and keep praying and keep praying over stuff. But God says you are in a different year now. You have you don't understand that uh, the Lord of hosts is with you. The God of Jacob is your refuge. And I'm gonna wah, 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 I'm gonna have you pick the right stone. I'm gonna tell you the right thing to pray. I'm gonna tell you the right way to move. Because it's only gonna take you one hit. Somebody says it's only gonna take one. Turn to somebody says it's only gonna take one. Lastly, lastly, your assignment this year, glory, is not to dance in victory, but to cut the head off. Oh God. See, we've been there. We have danced. We have danced and shouted because the stone, yeah, the stone sunk in the head. And we saw the life fall down. And we saw it. We saw it. It's been a celebration. Oh, God, you made it to me. Yes, we've been there. Well, yeah, yeah. Nothing wrong with praise because praise is common. Yes, there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with declaring victory and walking victory. Nothing wrong with that. But God says this time you gonna finish the job. Here's how. Watch this. Verse fifty. Verse fifty. Excuse me. Verse fifty and fifty-one. David triumphed over the Philistine with only a sling and a stone. For he had no sword. <laughs> then David ran, pulled the old, pulled the lion's sword from his sheet. David used it to kill him and cut off his head. You're going to use the enemy's tool, his weapon. Oh, can you imagine the disrespect? <laughs> okay, okay. All right. So years ago, Bishop. Terrell Owens. They were playing against the Dallas Cowboys. Not Terrell Owens, but it was Deion Sanders. Excuse me. And uh, Deion Sanders scored a touchdown. He got up and ran to the middle of the field. And you know, they got the big logo that started middle field. And he stood and did this. As a sign of conquering, as a sign of I'm victorious, acknowledge what just happened. He not only did it once, he did it again. He scored and he ran back to the middle of the field, full stadium, until somebody ran and knocked him down. Because they say you're not going to disrespect our field. But I'm going to tell you, you're not going to get knocked out. Because that's a sign of disrespect there. Because I'm going to tell that I'm going to take your own sword. And I'm going to chop your head off with your own sword. Because what? Oh, that's too bad. No, it's not. Because that joker just disrespected. And then he said, I defy. The children of Israel. I defy the Lord's army. And God says, I'm going to repay. Because I never forget 
Glory to God. Now, now, I'm going to close here. The word head, very important. The word head there is that it means, in the Hebrew, it means top. It means summit. It means upper part. It means chief. Uh -huh. It means total. It means height. It means, watch this division. It means company, band. But here's the word I want to focus on. It means beginning. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Here's why God says you got to cut off the head. Because God says, I'm going to take your blessed anointed self. You who were called for this moment. You that the conversation was about when they said you should have been aborted. You that was the black sheep of the family. I'm going to take you. I'm going to use you to go to the beginning. And I'm going to cause you to cut it off where it started. And I tell the church, your assignment is to go back to where it began. Ah, and cut it off. You're not going to play with this thing. No more. Are we just pulling up weeds? You're going to go to the root. You're going to go to where it began. Yeah. You're going to go to the beginning. And you're going to cut it off. Watch this now. Because when you cut the head off, wherever the head goes, the body goes. Yeah. And the Bible says, Bishop, that when David cut the head off, everybody that was in the army of the Philistines, they said when they saw him, watch this, not just fall because of the one stone, but when they saw his head cut off, they dispersed. God says, when you cut the head, I need you to hear me. Because something is scheduled to happen in your family this year. Because when you cut the head this year of that demon in your family, everything that was attached to them, that was going on in their lives, that was disturbing the peace of the house, it is going to disperse. It is going to run. Because when you cut the power source, ah, everything that was dependent upon the power source dies. Glory to God. They were depending on the light. They didn't have to do nothing because he was their champion. But they saw their champion head get cut off. Now they lost all of their strength because the very thing that they needed support from is no longer there. I hope that you all are ready this year because this is a time that you got to wake up and get up. It's the time now where you are going to have to get out of your bed. And before you pick up the phone and call your leaders... God says, no, you have been anointed to go after this. No, 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 no. Come on, I need to say this to this house. Because you have been depending on the leaders to hold your hand and walk you to the battle. And as long as I got my leaders, I know I'm going to be fine. But God says this year, yes, Lord, there's a maturity that's coming to the ministry. Uh huh. God says, I'm not looking at your age. Nope. Nope. He said, no, I've been there before. Because I told Jeremiah, don't tell me how young you are. Don't tell me that you're just a youth. No, I called you. I knew you before. Glory to God. You were in your mother's womb. I know what I put on the inside of you. So this year, uh -uh, God says, I'm going to kick you out the nest. <laughs> because I have given you full authority to face this thing. Because you have to step in your authority so that you may know who I am. 
And they knew that day that the God of Israel was real. They will know this year. Hear me, you all. It matters not that your folks who say, oh, you doing that church thing? You still going over there Sunday mornings at 10 o'clock? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. But hear me, hear me. This year. Somebody say this year. This year. This year. They will know that the God that you serve is alive. Glory to God. Stretch your hands right now to the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we release this body into a new level of maturity. We release this body now to go forth in this assignment. Hi, God, I thank you that this body, glory to God, is not just going to dance and shout in the victory, but they're going to fulfill the assignment because their assignment is to go after the head. Go for the head. Father, you are revealing now this is why you had to go through the hell that you had to go through. Many of you have asked the Lord, God, why did I go through this? Why did I have to suffer this? God, why did I have to be ostracized? God, why did I have to feel like that I was in a place of loneliness? God, why, why is it that I had to go through all of those things? And God says, because of what I want you to be. I called you to be. You have been called for this purpose. Glory to God. That's why you never fit in. Because I called you not to fit. Because I called you and separated you for my purpose. And in the name of Jesus Christ, you will take the head. Glory to God. You will cause the very thing that has been going like cycles in your house to fall and die. We decree and declare that this season is called new for you. We decree and declare that you shall see in a new way. You shall hear in a new way. God has trained your hands for war. And now you will walk uh, in a sweatless victory. You will not labor or toil, but you're going to move in faith. Watch my instructions, says the Lord. For that which I tell you to do, I am ready to move. For I say to you, even as I told Jeremiah, Jeremiah, what do you see? I see the branch of an almond tree blossoming. You have seen well, for I am ready now. I am ready now to perform my word. In the name of Jesus, you shall see the manifestation of the word of the Lord that has been spoken to you, not just today, but what God has told you about your household. You shall see the evidence of it this year in the name of Jesus. Now let the people rise this morning. Rise, come on, and rejoice in the Lord your God. Rejoice in the Lord your God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say this with me. Here am I, Lord. Send me. Here I am, Lord. Send me. I'm ready. I'm called for this. I'm not alone. You have equipped me for this work. I shall fulfill this assignment. And I'm coming back with the hand, Corey. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, let out a shout to those man. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. 